This is Apathy Hour. A bit of dating advice. Stop trying to get their attention through your Instagram story or post. Life is too short. So many people these days make it so obvious that they are trying to get their crush's attention through their Instagram stories or posts. Don't do this. Text them. Ask them on a date. Ask them are they interested in you. We get so bogged down with strategizing about how we're going to get their attention. Will they like this story of me and my new clothes? Will they respond or comment on my new post that I look good in? We need to stop playing games with ourselves and move on what we want in life. If their answer is no, then great. It means you no longer have to waste time and energy trying to impress someone who really isn't into you and you can move on and find someone who will like you and who will invest in you. If they say yes, then great. You have bypassed months of playing games and you're on a good track to see where things could go. Let's stop using our social media posts or stories as our primary means of communication to those who we like and let's use actual communication to communicate. You have not because you ask not. Try simplifying your life. Stop the needless anxiety over whether they will reach out to you because of your post. Start creating your life. Stop waiting for it to come to you. I say well said. Communication is the foundation of any relationship, business or personal, and as such, should be direct. In many cases, the reason why people are apprehensive to communicate is usually due to fear. Fear of rejection, fear of how the other person may react, but fear not. When people are dying, what they regret most is not things that they did, but the things they didn't do when they could have. Here's a life pro tip. Pet guardians and people that consider themselves pet parents, your relationships with your pets will improve dr drastically if you remember that your pets are companions for you, not worshippers or ego inflators. Treat them with respect and a sense of humor, as you would a friend. Creating rigid expectations for your pets or taking bad behavior personally, like my feelings are hurt because my dog likes X more than me, or my dog makes me look bad when he does Y, often makes problems worse. If you want to develop a strong relationship, build it through play, training, and kindness. Don't do things that bother your pet for fun, like picking up a cat that doesn't like it, touching a dog in a way that annoys them, etc. And remember that every animal is an individual and has a different personality. Some animals don't appreciate some kinds of connection with others or have traumas to contend with that make their bonding that take more time. Have expectations of your pets that are rooted in fairness and love, not ego or the expectation to be worshipped. Last but not least, if your pet needs help, get them the appropriate help, as you would a friend. This will also help build trust. My opinion is that animals don't exist to worship humans, but my experience is that we can earn their love and affection through respect. I imagine this applies well to those who do things to their pets that's borderline abusive, like picking up a cat by its tail or shoving a dog's snout in its piss when they have an accident. I hope this message reaches the people that need to hear it. It may be tough for man's best friend to be your friend when you feel their anxiety and treat them like an obligation. When it comes to cats, however, though some of them may be perfect, some, regardless of your relationship, will literally bite the hand that feeds them. And finally, you should know. You should know that for roughly 86% of Americans, Charitable donations provide zero tax benefit. Why you should know? This fact is because charitable organizations will provide you with the generic save this for your records as it may be a tax deductible statement when you make a donation, leading many to think that this will help them when April comes around. Charitable donations are only 
of any benefit if you itemize your deductions, which only 13.7% of Americans do. This is not to say that you shouldn't donate. Of course, you should donate to causes you believe in. Important note, though, is 2020 is the loan exception. You can get benefits up to $300 regardless of itemized deductions. However, it goes back to normal next year. 2020 has been a year of exceptions in many ways. Making a very loose stretch of a connection between the two, donations in relation to love, love in relation to Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day occurs in February, and in February of 2020, there were 29 days. So there was a February 29th. As most may know, February is commonly known for having only 28 days. This anomaly is due to what is called a leap year. A leap year, also known as an intercalary year or bisextile year, is a calendar year that contains an additional day, or in the case of a lunar solar calendar, a month, added to keep the calendar year synchronized with the astronomical year or seasonal year. Because astronomical events and seasons do not repeat in a whole number of days, calendars that have the same number of days in each year drift over time with respect to the event that the year is supposed to track. By inserting, also known as intercalating in technical terminology, an additional day or month into the year, the drift can be corrected. A year that is not a leap year is a common year. For example, in the Gregorian calendar, each leap year has 366 days instead of 365 by extending February to 29 days rather than the common 28. These extra days occur in each year, which is an integer multiple of 4, except for years evenly divisible by 100, which are not leap years unless evenly divisible by 400. Similarly, in the lunar solar Hebrew calendar, Adar Aleph, a 13th lunar month, is added seven times every 19 years to the 12 lunar months in its common years to keep its calendar year from drifting through seasons. In the Baha'i calendar, a leap year is added when needed to ensure that the following year begins on the March equinox. The term leap year probably comes from the fact that a fixed date in the Gregorian calendar normally advances one day of the week from one year to the next. But the day of the week in the 12 months following the leap year from March 1 through February 28th of the following year will advance two days due to the extra day, thus leaping over one day in the week. For example, Christmas Day, December 25th, falls on a Friday in 2020, Saturday in 2021, Sunday in 2022, and Monday in 2023, but then will leap over Tuesday to fall on a Wednesday in 2024. A person born on February 29th may be called a leapling or a leaper. In common years, they usually celebrate their birthdays on February 28th. In some situations, March 1st is used as the birthday in a non-leap year, since it is the day following February 28th. Technically, a leapling will have fewer birthday anniversaries than their age and years. This phenomena is exploited when a person claims to be only a quarter of their actual age by counting their leap year birthday anniversaries only. For example, in Gilbert and Sullivan's 1879 comic opera, The Pirates of Penzance, Frederick the Pirate Apprentice discovers that he is bound to serve the pirates until his 21st birthday, that is, when he turns 88 years old, since 1900 was not a leap year, rather than until his 21st year. For legal purposes, legal birthdays depend on how local laws count time intervals. So if you're a leapling, you always have two ages, your chronological age and your calendrical age. Hmm, clever way to stay young. Bringing this full circle, communicate directly with the ones you care about. 
And whether you're donating to a cause or donating your time to others, treat them with respect and appreciation. Your pets will love you for it. Your friends will love you for it. Yes, 2020 was an anomaly, but a new year is fast approaching. That is all.